Charles Harrison Mason was born in Bartlett, Tennessee, which is in Shelby County outside Memphis, Tennessee. And he was the son of freedmen, Eliza Harrison and Jeremiah Mason. His parents were uh, former slaves. Uh, they were Baptists, and he was born in a very religious uh, family. His eldest brother, Israel Nelson, uh, was his pastor at the time, and he baptized him. Uh, and he was ultimately called to the ministry himself in the Baptist church and preached in churches in Arkansas and Tennessee and Mississippi and had an effective and successful career as a Baptist minister. And Mason began searching, soul searching, for his ultimate spiritual experience. And soon after, he came under a fellowship of holiness-believing Baptist ministers. And this is the time that he met a man by the name of C.P. Jones. This holiness movement was uh, basically started by C.P. Jones, and they decided to have sort of a, a conference of those that were a part of their fellowship in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, and he began to believe that the Bible required sanctification and holy living, that the lifestyle and morality of a believer ought be higher than an unbeliever. And he began to preach holiness. And of course, there was controversy around that because many around him did not preach holiness and did not believe uh, as he did. And around this time, around 1897, uh, Mason founded a church in Lexington, which is in Mississippi's Delta. And so Mason and Jones continued um, their, to grow their fellowship, and they were eventually kicked out of the Baptist church. And so he kind of severed uh, his relationship with the Baptist church. And of course, in 1906, he heard about a Pentecostal revival that was taking place in Los Angeles. And he was very curious because he yearned for something different, something more. And so C.P. Jones suggested that Mason go out on a fact-finding mission to Los Angeles. And true enough, they went in the spring of 1907 to see what was going on there. And he does meet a man by the name of William Seymour who was basically the founder of this revival, which later became known as the Azusa Street Revival. And so he came to Los Angeles on uh, Azusa Street uh, and uh, received the baptism in the Holy Ghost, heard the preaching of Seymour and was impacted by it. And true enough, he sees that there are people worshiping together um, interracially. People from all walks of life are there receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues, and he's impressed. After spending several weeks in Los Angeles, he returned uh, to the South and shared what he had heard with his brothers. Some accepted it, some rejected it, but to those who accepted it, he established the Church of God in Christ, where they preached holiness and shared the righteousness uh, of God's nature and his requirement of us and righteous living. Bishop Mason was a man ahead of his time in many respects. Uh, many people don't realize it, but the first 250 or so Assemblies of God ministers were ordained by him prior to 1914 when many split off and became the, what's known today as the Assemblies of God. Mason had a congregation and an organization that was interracial. He was also an interesting character because he opposed the war in World War I, and he preached conscientious objection. And the enrollment officers became concerned because so many blacks were not showing up to register to, um, for the, the draft. So eventually Mason came onto the radar of the FBI and they began to surveil him. And the, the FBI was very concerned about him. He was popular. Thousands of whites, blacks, and others gathered to hear him preach 
and Mason was jailed on numerous occasions. So being that he was being harassed, he wrote to the White House and to the government for an exemption for his members because they did not believe in taking up arms or taking the life of other men. Mason was one of the greatest evangelists of the 20th century. He fits into the pantheon of great religious leaders. He established churches throughout Tennessee, Arkansas, and Mississippi. During the great migration of African Americans from the South to the North between world wars, Mason established an urban strategy. He sent ministers to Philadelphia and Chicago and Detroit and Kansas City and Los Angeles, San Francisco. And during this time, Mason's ministers established the storefront churches in urban centers for those who had lived in the Jim Crow South. The Church of God in Christ popularized storefront churches. One of Bishop Mason's greatest monumental achievements was the building of Mason Temple. Between 1940 and 1945, he and his team erected this beautiful temple, which was the largest built by African Americans of a religious organization in the country.